This is Lesson 16 in our study of Proverbs 31. This is a lesson about a woman I call Moxie. She is a force of character, determination, courage, and nerve. And in this lesson, she is a hard worker. Since our last lesson, have you seen a new image of what confident looks like? Has your image changed just a little bit? Confident women are rare, and they are priceless. Have you thought about sitting at the gate, being known by the elders? You know, there is limited seating at the gates. Not everyone is invited. But on to Lesson 16, we're calling this an entrepreneur. And the verse says this, She makes a cloak and sells it, and she gives a belt to the trafficker. She is making stuff again. She is our handy mandy. We don't make much stuff anymore. It's becoming a lost art. Back in the day, it was a school requirement. How else were we going to be able to clothe ourselves if we didn't know how to sew? We don't sew. We shop. So let's change this verse up a little bit. Let's exchange the word cloak for chicken. She makes chicken and sells it. She gives the leftovers to the kid next door. Yep, she's not only handy, she's thrifty. She can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, and make BLTs and sell them at lunch hour. With the leftovers, she offers them to someone in need. We could say that she has a mind for business, but we've already done that. So we're calling this entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is all about ideas and dreams and desires and ways to making them come true. We've all been asked, if you could do anything you wanted, what would you do? So I ask you that question. If you could do anything in the world, what would it be? There's a question, though, that needs to be followed up with this question. And it takes us back a few lessons. And it is the simple word, why? A lot of times we have desires and dreams, things that we think we want to do, or we think it would be fun to experience, or we believe that if we could do it, something else was going to happen to us. When we're thinking about our dreams and our ideas, we really have to investigate the why. Are we doing it because it's truly a desire, or is it coming out of something, an old hurt, an old neglect? Are we wanting to do something to prove that we're important, that we're in special, or to prove somebody wrong who said we are going to be a failure? So if we can accomplish this one thing, it's going to prove them all wrong. When we think about going after our dreams, making our ideas come to life, it takes an awful lot of work and energy. And if we're chasing after something that isn't sincere, it is only going to be a road of great frustration. And there's going to be a letdown at the end. Have you ever wanted something to happen so badly and you've waited so long for it and then when it finally happens, it's not anything that you expected and all you are left with is great disappointment? In the movie The Wizard of Oz, it's probably the ultimate example of a group of people going out after their dreams. Dorothy, she's dreaming of a life outside of hers. She starts on the path of the yellow brick road. and She starts out all alone. And along the way, she picks up some friends, some people who are in need, some people who also have a dream. They think that if they could attain one thing, it's going to make them better. It's going to fix them. It's going to change them. And they have adventures, and they're not all fun. Many of them are scary until they finally get to the wizard till Oz is finally in their sight and when they get there they find it's a facade and that all along they had the power within themselves to make those changes they didn't need outside help they didn't need someone to fix it for them it was within them Sometimes along our journeys, we feel like we are just a lost book sitting on a shelf, totally forgotten, and will never, ever be found. But what do we do during those times? Those times when we feel like nothing's happened, it's not falling into place, I want this so badly, I can't make it work. 
Those are the times that we need to stop and learn about our dreams, our ideas, what it's really going to take to make them come true. We tell kids all the time, practice makes perfect. And we as adults have to follow that same rule. So those times when we feel like we're sitting on the shelf, when nothing is happening, when we think we've been forgotten, those are the time that we need to practice our skills. Whatever that is. For writers, it's practicing writing. Writing and writing and reading and writing and getting better and better at it. For someone who wants to sing, it's taking voice lessons. It's learning from other people. Rarely is anyone ever born with a perfect gift. We're giving the ability to do it, but it's our responsibility to make sure that we're doing something with those gifts, that we're making them better, that we are improving our skills because there will be a day when you are taken off the shelf, when somebody comes along and says, I need that book. I need that person. I need those skills. I need that experience. There is nothing in your life that has to go to waste. All of it combined together creates the person that you are. And there will come a time when you, your path will cross with somebody who needs your skills, who needs your talents, who needs your abilities. And when that comes, that's not the time to start getting better. That's the time to shine, to say, this is what I've been working on. This is what I've learned. I am so much better than I was 10 years ago. Thank God you didn't meet me last year. I could have never done this. We have to learn to trust the process. We also have to learn to trust God, that he has a plan. He is working it out. And even when we don't see it in front of our eyes, it's happening. It takes people coming together to make dreams and ideas and visions come true. And sometimes those two people that have to come together both have work to do. So sometimes you're waiting on somebody else. And a lot of times somebody else is waiting on you. We have to trust the process and trust that there is a God that's got a roadmap for our life. And these things are coming together. She makes a cloak and she sells it and she gives a belt to the trafficker. My prayer that I leave with you this week is this, God of creation, give us the courage to follow our dreams. Give us the patience needed to hone our skills and to become the best we can. Teach us to trust the process, but most of all, teach us to trust you and to truly believe that you have given each of us talent and gifts. Correct us when we belittle those gifts and talents and nudge us when we misuse them. Thank you that you have made each of a creative being and instilled within us the desire and the need to create. This is a special garment in Moxie's wardrobe. It is an accent piece that blends together all the other garments into a new look and a new feel. It is peace that gets better with age, and it also takes us to a new level of being women clothed in strength and dignity and who can laugh without fear of the future. We're winding our series down. If you've not contacted me, please do so. I would love to hear from you and about your Moxie journey.